So welcome to the Barefoot Manisha's rundown of the Night Lords Legion. And we're going to go through the Legion special rule, advanced reaction, warlord traits, special units, unique characters, and Primarch Comrade Kurz. To start off with, we first to say that I think Night Lords are actually in a really, really good position in Heresy 2. Overall, like you've got to build into their Legion special rule, but the Legion special rule is built based off your army, not your opponents, really. It provides a significant buff to your army. Their advanced reaction's really good. The Warlord traits are all right. The Panoply of War is really good. The Rites of War, really good. Legion units are okay are okay. Terror Squad's got a buff. Um, but I think it all stacks up to being a really, really good Legion. And especially with some key things that give a massive boost to Night Lords. So we'll start off with a talent for murder. So a unit comprised entirely of models, which are Night Lords, uh, when they attack during the fight sub phase or make a shooting attack, against an enemy which is pinned, falling back, or outnumbered by the attacking unit, gains plus one to wound or armor pen rolls made during the shooting attack or assault. When determining whether it's outnumbered, if you've got bulky, say like bulky two, for jetpack units, they count as two models. Terminators count as two models. So stuff that is bulky will help you outnumber your opponent, or a smaller squad will still outnumber, say like five bikes will outnumber a tactical squad so yeah it's the fact that they've expanded this to include shooting attacks is just really really amazing if you can keep your squads at higher numbers like it's obviously going to favor lower numbers of big squads to do this um to take full advantage of it vehicles are going to count as 10 models for purposes of this so you're Laz cannon squads aren't really ever going to get it off versus a tank. But anything against infantry is going to have quite a large effect at, at all times until you start getting reduced to lower numbers. And I think it's just an excellent special rule. It really capitalises on the feel of the Night Lords as they ported it over from Heresy 1. And it's got that benefit of it being with shooting attacks as well. So what is not to like for a talent of murder? Like, it's mo best capitalised with your assault squads, night raptors, bike squads, things like that. But these are things that night lords players already want to lean into and take advantage of. So their legion rule is really, really good. Even if you have a big despoiler squad, plus one to wound is just excellent at all times. If you have a, a tactical squad with 11 members firing against another tactical squad your bolters hit sorry wound on threes and i suppose thinking about it if you you can even rapid fire down rhinos and the side of predators with an 11 man tactical squad which is just really good or it's, it's not really good it's it's a crazy benefit that is just there all the time for you to take advantage of it's sort of middling on its actual effectiveness for bolters versus rhinos. So the advanced reaction, you get the better part of Valor, and this is an excellent reaction, I would say. So once per battle, as with all advanced reactions, when your enemy declares an assault, you get to make a fallback move with your reacting move unit. It automatically regroups at the end of the move, um, and like in fantasy, if your unit, or not exactly like in fantasy, but your en your opponent can redeclare the or reissue the charge to a different unit, if your unit is then out of range, so it's slightly different, I suppose, but sort of similar. That interruption of your opponent's plans, rather than just say a reaction like hold the line, or something that just lets your unit slightly hurt or like with overwatch hurt the opposing army this can completely deny your opponent the ability 
to get their combat units stuck in as, at the right time. Especially with something that's going to fall back 3D6, like bikes or jump pack units. Why can I not think of the name, the word jump pack units then? But yeah, with jump pack units, bikes that are going to be falling back 3D6, if you've got a 4-inch charge already, it's averaging up to 11 or 12. So making that charge really unlikely. And just putting a stopper on your opponent's plans when they attempt to do them. The, the redirection of the charge is a slight debuff, like it doesn't stop your opponent charging, but if there's only one unit that that opponent wanted to charge, they can get away. And they don't suffer any usual penalties for having regrouped in your turn to then go and do something different with them. And it is an excellent, excellent reaction that... I don't know whether it's as good as, say, like Imperial Fists or Blood Angels charging in your opponent's phase, but the ability to deny your opponent their plan of getting their combat unit in so you can have favourable conditions is really, really good, and I really like it. I think it fits Night Lords really well. The better part of Valor is such an excellent name <laughs> for, for the reaction, which obviously comes into how powerful it is so that you can dangle it in your opponent's face and really gloat about it being a Night Lords player. And yeah, I think it's an absolutely game-changing reaction. So, Warlord traits, you get Warmonger. Basically, the Warlord that and unit that gains, gain plus one to hit rolls when targeting enemy units with independent characters in, uh, and the Loyalist Allegiance, well, it's traitor only, so when you're not going to have when you're not going to be playing against a warlord that's loyalist um as well if the you have an allied detachment with a sons of horus faction the warlord gains fearless which is really really good is there's some drawbacks to fearless like not being able to evade for that because it's the warlord and his unit uh yeah and any unit joins against fearless that would then stop you from gaining Shrouded, which is a drawback, but so long as you're not relying on that, it can be a massive buff that if you want to lean into by taking a small ally detachment of Sons of Horus, just as like keeping their eye on your Night Lords, is really good. And it really fits the theme of them coming to heal at the Siege of Terror, especially or just before. I really like it as a Warlord trait. There's pretty much never going to be a time where plus one to hit against independent characters in their units isn't going to come into it in the game. Because as a Night Lords player, you want to get into combat. You want your your good units to wipe out their good units, and this will help you do it. Jadik Clan Lord. So the Warlord, and so this is like the biker Warlord trait, and we'll see that later in the, in the Rites of War bit. The Warlord and all models part of a unit gains counter-attack one, Ignores movement, all penalty to movement and charge rolls due to terrain. May re-roll fail dangerous terrain. In addition, may make an additional reaction during the opposing player's movement phase as long as the Warlord has not been removed as a casualty. This is potentially really good. It's, it's not as game-breaking as some of the Warlord traits, but as we see later, it can't be. Counter-attack one is really good for when finally they catch you and you've not used the better part of Valor to get away from a bad um, assault. Rerolling failed dangerous terrains particularly is really good, especially like if you're on a bike, just say. And ignoring penalties to movement and charge is... I, I actually find the difficult terrain at the standard minus two to be more punishing than when you rolled 2d6 and took that like random distance. I do find it more punishing. So just to be able to ignore that for your movement and charge, excellent. And movement phase, reaction, good. You can move forwards or backwards with your army to get two off from the assaults that you want. It's positioning is everything in pretty much every tabletop game especially with a combat army, which you were likely going to be. And then Flame Master. The Warlord gains Fear 1 special rule, and each time the Warlord is part of the combat that results in all enemies being destroyed, 
or is part of a challenge in which the enemy combatant is removed as a casualty, increases the value by plus one to a maximum of fear three. Now, this is something that starts out okay. You have the ability in Trophies of Judgment to gain fear one for a nominal cost anyway. So the, the initial fear one isn't that incredibly good because you can just get it somewhere. You, you could be taking your Warlord trait somewhere else. However, when it starts stacking up to fear three and that stacking with other fear traits, it becomes really, really good. It's, do you know, like it's shattering. If you can take out a tactical squad and you've challenged the sergeant and someone stupidly accepts that challenge, you've just gone up to fear three because you've, you, you'll have destroyed a unit. We say Night Raptor squad with your warlord in, destroys a unit and the challenge. Or you just pick on a tactical squad first and you will get to fear three very fast, which is incredibly good. So on to the rights of war. You get the Swift Blade and Terror Assault. Now, the Swift Blade is the biker right of war that Night Lords got at the end of first edition. So, can take up to five HQ choices like last time, and must be a Praetor or a Centurion, and must be on a Legion Sparta combat bike or Scimitar jet bike. No single one is the Warlord, and every single one gains the Warlord trait of Jadek Clanlord, which is the counter-attack, ignoring movement and charge penalties, uh, re-rolling dangerous terrain. And this is sort of why the Jadek Clanlord trait can't be overwhelmingly good, because it's going to happen five up to five times in an army, which I imagine you're going to do five times. So... It's it's just going to be overwhelmingly powerful if there's five of that if there's five warmongers um, in your army, it's too good. So they're limited to this warlord trait. Outrider squads can be taken as troops choices. You need a detachment using this right of war. More and more into the biker theme. Um, may only be selected for a primary detachment, and that's because you've got to be the warlord, I imagine. Using this right of war may not take any model whose rule state it must be the army's warlord, including or lim not limited to the Primarch. No unique characters, basic, basically like Sevatar. And may not take units with one or more models with the heavy type, bombard, slow, super heavy, or artillery subtypes. So no rapiers, no terminators like Contenkard, no Leviathan Dreadnought, things like that. But that's not massively going to fit your theme anyway if you're going with this army. So one of the things is with this, you're going to get multiple smaller Death Stars occurring in your army. You can only use the reaction of the movement, the extra movement phase reaction one time, so you're not going to get six movement phase reactions. But it's still incredibly good. It's going to lean into your outnumbering bonus because bikes count as multiples. And who doesn't like a biker army? I don't know. So, Terror Assault, and this is where I would say the real power of the Night Lords comes in. Any detachment using this right of war, um, when night fighting... Night fighting is always in effect on the first battle turn until the end of the second game turn. At the start of the third game turn, it carries on on a four... If the result is three or less, the night fighting ends. At the start of the fourth turn, night fighting rules are immediately gone. Terror Assault and Night Raptor squads can be taken as troops. So you don't need tactical squads if you just want a more elite focus to your army. Any model with the Legion of Starties Night Lord special rule and character subtype gain fear one. So all of your sergeants. And it's just really good oh my god he's just such a good right of war the right of war may only be selected for a primary because i suppose you're playing with the the night fighting rules so much may only take a single heavy sport choice um may not include lords of war or super heavy subtype now there i would have liked to see with the exception of a thunderhawk or stormbird something like that 
it used to be that, well, Bane Blades are terrifying, right? So you can take a Super Heavy. They've removed that in this edition. But are you going to miss it? No, not at all. Being able to take Night Raptor squads, which have got a massive boost as troops, as your compulsory troops, is really, really good. Are you still going to want some tactical squads? I would say so, just for something that you don't have to count on to do anything except sit around on an objective. But being able to take Night Raptor squads as troops is just excellent. Terror squads as well, really, really good, as expected. Night fighting for three turns. Now that is something against any army except other Night Lords and Raven Guard, you are going to come out massively on top by taking that right of war. And that is because of your Prey Sight War Gear option. So Prey Sight War Gear, we'll go onto that straight away and then circle back to the rest of them. You gain Night Vision for 15 points per unit. And that's if you compose entirely of Legion Astartes Night Lords, which I imagine every unit will be, right? You want this on all of your shooting units, and that's because it's not really going to benefit close combat units. With the exception of things, if you take if you happen to take a tech marine to gain the Cognis Signum plus one to ballistic skill, I'd potentially skip I'd skip this, but a lot of the time. Just having Prey Sight for 15 points is going to be so much more useful than going the whole hog with the Tech Marine to gain the Cognisignum to gain the Night Vision. Night Vision also helps you ignore Shrouded special rule. So nothing is getting shrouded against anything with this, which is just amazing. Just absolutely amazing. <laughs> what, what can be said against it for potentially half the game? Your enemy is minus one uh, with the right of war. Your enemy will be minus one leadership before you stack your fear from ter terror assault or squads. They're going to be limited to 18 inch range, or sorry, 24 inch range, minus one BS, and you are going to completely ignore that. So, terror assault stacked with prey sight is just entirely game changing. I wouldn't say you need it on your tactical squads either because they, they're just not good enough to warrant 15 points spent on them to get... They're not going to be shooting anything with enough effectiveness anyway. So plasma squads, veteran squads with nemesis bolters, what other type are they? Recon squads, support squads, heavy weapon squads, things like that, prey sight on them. Do you want it on your dreadnoughts? Yes, you do. It's so long as it's a shooting dreadnought. Is anywhere that's going to be doing work shooting, especially if you've got Terror Assault as a right of war, wants to go in there. Just going back to Terror Assault as well, because it's such a key. Terror Assault, giving all characters fear, like having that with the minus one to leadership if your opponent doesn't have a Vox. And you've got to remember a Vox plus an Augury scanner, which doesn't give you the whole hog of night fighting, comes to 15 points, your prey site costs 15 points. Your terror assault, if you, you can deep strike your night raptor squads, in which can actually be seen done against me on the Sector Wargaming channel, the minus two for fear one and night fighting is crippling to a lot of squads. Just absolutely crippling. And it leans really heavily into it when you force a pinning check by deep striking next to someone. So it allows you to deep strike next to someone. They take a pin in check, potentially fail it, and then you charge without having taken any damage. It's just so, so good. So Nostrum and Chain Weapons, enemy, any Night Lord's special character, or any Night Lord's character may exchange a power weapon for a chain blade or chain glaive for 10 points or a headsman's axe for 15 points. A chain blade is plus one strength, AP three, melee, shred, because it's chain, breaching six. So it's a slightly better power sword. However, I wouldn't say it was worth that extra 10 points on, 20 points, that's a power fist, or, or even a thunder hammer in some cases. And I just don't think it's worth it for the general chain blade 
on char on characters. It's just it just isn't, sadly. Chain Glaives plus two strength AP three, melee two handed shred breaching six. Again, an extra ten points. Is it worth it? You're not getting the two close combat weapons. As it on a particular character that doesn't already have it, say like a Centurion, no, I wouldn't say that it is. You want to find some way of getting just something something better. Like it's, I'd take a power power axe over that on a squad sergeant even. I'd take a power fist on the squad sergeant because getting that guaranteed AP2 is more worthwhile, I would say. And this comes with the caveat that in squads that have lots and lots of these weapons just built in, that's, that changes this. The amount of dice thrown in some of the squads in the Night Lords Legion I would say completely change what I have just said there, but we'll get on to that. The Headsman's Axe, strength times two, so you're then doubling out space marines and characters. AP, strength times two, AP three, melee two-handed shred breaching six. Now this one is actually really scary because with three attacks being thrown into that, it means that you can double someone out before they get to strike. And doubling someone out at initiative is incredibly good and incredibly scary, at least, as a prospect. So I really like the Headsman's Axe as one of those options. All of them are quite good. It's just they're just 10 points when a power weapon's already 10. So 20 points because you're exchanging it. So you've got to already have bought the power weapon. I just think take the shine off those chain blades and chain glaives. Eschaton Power Claws. Any model with an independent character, Night Lords, um, may exchange a Power Fist for a Claw for plus 10 points. It's Strength times 2, AP 2, Shred, Murderous Strike 6+, plus, Unwieldy Specialist Weapon. Now, a lot of these... Is, is it good? Yes. How many times will Shred come into it? When it's going to be super annoying when you've rolled that one. Do you massively need it? With Murderous Strike 6, quite good, but you're already doubling people out with a normal fist norm. Like, normally, you are doubling them out. It might come into it against Ultramarines and Salamanders, but... For 10 points a model, I'd just go with a thunder hammer rather than a fist. And it will brutal two people. Because thunder hammers are just that good now. That I think it thunder hammers edge out the Eschaton Power Claw and they're actually five points cheaper. So I wouldn't be going with them all the time. Lords of Murder. Independent character and Night Lords people. Uh, do not already have the unique subtype, make it be given the Bloody Murder special rule. What does Bloody Murder do, I hear you ask? Bloody Murder. When a unit composed entirely of models with this special rule declares a charge against targeting a unit that is pinned, falling back, the charge rule gains an additional plus one modifier. If the charge is successful, then all models in the charging unit gain plus one attack on the turn that the charge is made. Now, Lord of Murder, on its own, just on a character, don't bother. If, he is, if your character is going into a unit with Bloody Murder, really, really good. And we'll get to, the, we'll get to the, a, few, a unit that has Bloody Murder, where if you are joining that unit, 100% take that. And that, until we get to that unit, is pretty much all. Prey Sight, we've been through. It's worth it, especially... I'd say it's worth it for just the one turn, but if you're going Terror Assault, it's definitely worth that like that price of 15 points a vox is 10 an augury scan is five and you get that like the benefits of both plus more for the same price so depending on the squad i would take it trophies of judgment enemy mo any model with the legion of Astartes, night lords and character may be given fear for 10 points 
if it has any version of fear, it may not be upgraded with trophies of judgment. If you are not taking terror assault that will give you fear anyway, if your warlord isn't taking flame master to gain that fear one anyway, definitely give them trophies of judgment. Fear is incredibly good right now in the game. So definitely worth taking. Obviously, you're not going to do it if you're taking Terror Assault because you gain Fear 1 on your character unit subtypes anyway. So it's just not worth it. Whereas if you're not taking that, definitely 100% worth it because playing with people's leadership is what you should be excited about as a Night Lords player. And this does that. And you should really lean heavily into it because it's consistent across the Legion that that is something that you'll want to do. On to Terror Squads for 115 points. Remember, these can be troops choices. They're elites now, but they can be troops in Terror Assault. And I recommend taking Terror Assault to every single person listening to this. They are single wound models. Weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 4. So they're not veterans. Two attacks, leadership 8, 3 up save. That You get five of them for the 115 points. They are the Skirmisher Infantry. So they get plus one to their cover saves if they're in cover or six in the open, which is good. They gain the infiltrate special rule so they can be deployed really close to the enemy. That allows you to, especially if they're out of sight, they're usually in cover. So they'll get, be getting four up in ruins or a five up in woods when everyone else is just getting a six, which is when a six up cover save, largely useless if you ask me. They get the Fear 1 special rule, Precision Strike 6 up, Bloody Murder. So this is where you would take the 5 point upgrade for Bloody Murder. Preferred Enemy Infantry, everyone that you want to be taking on with this. They've got Chainsaw Bolt Pistol Standard. They can add up to 10 additional for 18 points each. They can take Allegiant Vexilla for 10 points. Might look a bit weird on a, on a Terror Squad. They can... All be upgraded with bolters for one point each. No. Volkite chargers for two points each. Yes. Rotor cannons for five points each. Or flamers for five points each. Now, what would I be doing with this squad? So, Volkite weapons are really good, as we know. Unless you're playing salamanders... Volkite weapons are excellent and will rip through units with near impunity. However, I'm going to come down on the fact that I think rotor cannons have got enough of a boost in this edition. If I can ever get to them. I've got enough of a boost basically with their pit shell shock 1 and pinning. Right. So the result for 13 range strength three. Why would I take this? If you were taking, if, if it's night fighting first turn, or you've taken terror assault, so it's night fighting for three turns, and so this will work for two to three turns in terror assault. You've got fear one, so if you're close to the enemy, minus one leadership. It's night, another minus one. Rotor cannons are shell shot one, so another minus one. You then get pinning off your rotor cannon and if you cause enough casualties which is unlikely because it's strength three but you only need one wound to go through to do the pinning they could also run away at minus three leadership they take a pinning check at minus three leadership even a praetor at leadership 10 becomes leadership seven with doing that with these rotor cannons you're just stacking these leadership debuffs onto your opponent and then forcing them to take checks an assault four means that on game turn two if if you pinned them for one turn they're not doing damage to you second turn you can charge because i know you've infiltrated right so you can't charge first turn so but road cannons pin someone out of the game first turn second turn pin them again so they can't return so they can't overwatch and then you charge a pinned unit with your bloody murder, you get plus one attack. You have charged a pinned unit, so you're getting plus one to wound. You've got chainsaws re-rolling your wounds. They'll each have 
two attacks, plus one for charging, plus one for bloody murder. That's four attacks each. And they just that makes an incredibly scary unit just by the amount of attacks after having pinned someone. A caveat to that is, if you have pinned someone, sometimes it's better to just leave that unit alone for a turn because they will remain pinned and not doing anything. So it's, it's a give and take, and you can sort of see this on the Sector Wargaming Battle Report, which I did with them, where charging a pinned unit unpins them and they're ready to go if they win that assault so make sure it's like a tactical squad that you're picking on with this terror squad pinning them out of the game or other squads like a heavy weapon squad something high value that you just really want to get stuck into onto the assault phase with this unit any model may be given a chain blade for plus 10 points chain blade 10 points chain axe for five points so it sort of skips that step of having to go to a power uh, a power weapon before you can take the chain glaive or blade. It is now worth it, I would say. Rhodes cannons are assault weapons, so you can use them and then charge. I think it stacks really nicely with the squad in general. And you only need to get, once they're pinned, and you're getting that plus, what is it, plus one to wound on the with your legion rule, you're getting the plus one attack, the amount of attacks this unit gets, five of them is getting 21 attacks on the charge because the sergeant has an extra attack. It's just incredibly good because the amount of attacks that then generates potentially means you then wipe the squad or like win the assault. They then take a leadership check at minus three and you can run them down. Just really, really good. One thing I think they missed off this is the headsman can't take a headsman's axe crazy absolutely crazy headsman's axe <laughs> not a headsman's axe in sight really weird but it is what it is it is what it is really um would i upgrade the headsman with a plasma pistol hand flame of volkite i wouldn't stick with as many rotor cannons as possible and run people over i'd give him artificer armor as with every squad we ever get i sort of skip it out the artificer armor upgrade I'd take it on every single character you could get it on. But I think this is a very much a glass cannon unit, but once you start stacking in all of the fear buffs, debuffs, etc., it becomes terrifying as the terror for squad should be, especially in, or particularly in, Terror Assault, which I think every Night Lords player, again, should be playing, if you, if you know what's best for you. So... Night Raptor squad, 185 points. You get Night Raptors, which are skirmish again. Your weapon skill five now, so you're hitting most things on threes or good or like elite units on fours. There are two wounds here, two attacks, and this starts ramping up. You get chainswords, bolt pistols, so two close combat weapons. You've got your jump packs, as we all know they've got. They've got Relentless for some reason. Sudden Strike 1, so plus 1 initiative on the charge. Bloody Murder, plus 1 attack if you charge a pinned or running away unit. Fear 1, Night Vision. No need for Prey Sight. One thing to say on the Terror Squads, that's a place to put Prey Sight on. Because they don't have the Night Vision rule. Night Raptors, for some reason do, despite not really being a shooting unit where they'd really benefit here i would start putting on chain blades chain glaives i'd be more tempted to go for chain blades than chain glaives that additional attack means that well you right so theory is you already outnumber them you're a night raptor unit you want a nice big unit even 10 night raptors will likely outnumber most units that you are facing other than, say, 10-man Terminator units. So you're already getting plus one to wound. Chain blades gain plus one to wound. So I'm just double-checking as I'm going through to make sure all the information's right. Um, you get already gain plus one to wound, so that's plus two to wound. You're already wounding on twos. You don't need that, plus, and that additional plus one at the expense of an attack. You want the extra attack. So on the charge... You're going to get two attacks in your profile, three for charging, two close combat weapons, 
hopefully bloody murder as well. So that's five on the charge and six from the Huntmaster. One in five models can take um, a special weapon. I wouldn't. Any model may exchange both their light, their uh, chain sword and bolt pistol for a lightning claw. I'd think about it. I really would. I don't really see many Night Lords players doing it. But you wounded on threes with shred, that's better than a two. It's the same price to get two lightning claws as it is for a chain blade. I don't really see many Night Lords players doing it, but paired for that extra plus one is just going to, again, increase your number of attacks that you're getting all the time and you're going to start rolling over units. Wouldn't give Bolt Pistol for a Plasma Pistol or Volcat to Penta. I would give a an Artificer Armour to the Sergeant. And that's, that's that, really. They're a really good squad on the face of it. Now, here's the nasty trick. I would say you want to deep strike these ones. Why? Because they can, and that causes a pinning check. So if you come in turn two, which I, I would say you always want reserve manipulation. If you're deep striking anything, if you come in just even walking on from your board edge, if you flanking assault, subterranean assault, you want something to manipulate your reserves, like a reroll from an explorator array. Just off the top of my head. Um, or a master of signals. Just to ensure that your powerful units are there turn two and you're not waiting around for them. So you come in with your Night Raptor squad and deep strike next to an enemy unit. That causes a pinning check, as I said before. I think I said this in the terror assault bit. Your fear one and night vision causes a pinning check at minus two. So it's going to mitigate a lot of damage and trigger bloody murder for you. Two attacks, two close combat weapons charge, bloody murder, five attacks. And if not, I'd have some models with, say, sniper rifles that cause pinning. I'd have take, I'd try and take out sergeants in the first turn with recon squads or something like that. And then force these pinning checks in any way that you can. And I would say that Night Lords are much more successful with that than, say, Iron Warriors who have shrapnel bolters because you can force it with your fear, with your deep strikes, with your rotor cannons... And it's just very, very useful for the army to trigger that bloody murder and your outnumbering bonus. So the Kantankar squad, 225 points. So they are weapon skill 5, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 8 and 9 on the sergeant with 3 attacks. And you get 5 of them in Tartarus armour with a heavy flamer of Volkite Cavita, Cavita. And they have a chain blade each. They are Relentless, Bulky 2, Chosen Warriors, Stubborn, Lords of the Night, Deep Strike, and Fear 1. You can get up to 10 additional for 40 points each. And the Dissident may exchange Chain Blade for Eschaton Power Claw, which is 15 points. I would take that if I was going to take Contenkar. You can take them as Lords of the Night, as a retinue, or you can take the squad as a HQ slot on its own. So they're elites normally or can go HQ. And that's a bit of a cool rule that was in there in Heresy 1, but I really like it being in there. Volkite Cavita, range 10, strength 6, AP 5, heavy 4, D flag. It's a Volkite weapon that's going to wound on twos with D flag. It's quite good. I don't like the unit though. I really, really don't. There's other units in your army that can mow down troops better. You're already going to have a lot of units that can mow down troops. And these really suffer from being Terminators with no real access to AP2. And this is sort of the end of the special units section. And one thing that's really notable is you've got lots of stuff to pick on weaker units with but it's very hard 
to put a spanner in the works of a big Death Star or AP or a two up save unit. And that's, I think, intentional by the design team, but you're going to have to find that capability outside of your special units. I don't, off the top of my head, because what's a, a frequently underused choice in Heresy 2 now? A Laz Cannon Squad. How about that one? Or a Doredio with plasma. A, I don't know. Any, any, those just surprisingly came to mind. But you're going to need something to cover that gap in your army. And it can still be done. It's just not going to be done by the Contenka. And I think they missed out on their place in the army by not being able to deal with those Death star units. Because they just can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. They've got this, they can deep strike, cause a pinning check with fear, all that sort of stuff. They've got stubborn, so they can like maybe tie up a unit, but they, they're just not as good at doing their job as terror squads and night raptor squads, I'm sad to say, to be honest. Because I, I personally really like the models. I like all the models in the Night Lords range, actually. I personally really like the content car models. I'm not a hater of them, as I know some people are. But they just, I don't think, have a place in the army. The, like the Chosen Warriors rule that they've got. I don't really want an AP3 person in a challenge. Maybe, like, the and the Dissident could already accept challenges as a character. It's just, it just is what it is, I suppose. It's, they're just not brilliant, in my mind. In, a, in an excellent, excellent army for Heresy 2... I'm randomly flicking through the book now as if that's going to change my sentence in an excellent army in Heresy 2 I just don't think they have a place amongst the Night Lords as they are so on to Sevatar and the unique characters Sevatar is the Prince of Crows 220 points he's weapon skill 7 so one more than a normal Praetor ballistic skill 5 strength toughness 4 3 wounds initiative 6 4 attacks leadership 10 2 up save He's got a bolt pistol, Knight's Whisper, which is a plus two strength, AP two, two-handed, duelist edge one, murderous strike six plus, and master crafted power glaive, or chain glaive. Artificer armor, iron halo. He's got Master of the Legion, Psy he's a psyker character, independent character in his special rules, Master of the Legion, relentless, fear, fear two. Precision Strikes 4, Dirty Fighter, Bloody Murder, so we can go in your terror squads. Dark Dreams is a traitor and master of Atramentar. So the master of Atramentar, any unit of Legion Cataphracti Terminators or Tartarus Terminators and the same detachment as Sevatar gain Deep Strike. Sevatar himself does not. When these Terminators Deep Strike, that does not include Sevatar, they gain the preferred enemy everything special rules for the turn that they are deployed. And they can... You can also make an extra reaction in your opponent's movement phase. Now, this is really, really, really good. I I like that. I like having the Terminators in reserve. Now things can assault from reserve. It's a viable method of getting your combat units to combat if you can do the deep strike. So I really like that. I like the gaining of preferred enemy everything. You'll have to lean into the Terminators, but Cataphractic Terminator, Tartarus Terminators are better than Contenkar, so I would go with it. When So Dirty Fighter, when engaged in a challenge with a model whose weapon skill is 5 or more, Sevatar gains instant death, so against Praetors or other unique characters, you'll largely gain this um, instant death in a challenge, which is incredibly good when you wound on a 2+, plus because of your plus 2 strength, and your AP 2. Your, your duelist edge as well, so your initiative seven, which is just amazing. The only person this isn't going to come off great against, really, is Sigismund. And that's because Sigismund has Eternal Warrior, because we all know he should at all times. Because it's not like Abaddon lives further into the 40k universe, right? But anyway, Sevatar, excellent in that. Take on your enemy's warlord get them done in with Sevatar. Dark Dreams get access to Shadows of the Past and Future Psychic Power and gains no other Psychic Disciplines, powers or weapons. So what does that do? 
At the start of any assault phase, this the controller player makes a psychic check against leadership seven, and that's because he's a latent psycho rather than like a big boy psycho. If it's passed, he gains plus one weapon skill and attacks for the duration of the assault phase. If failed, gains a perils of the suffers a perils of the warp. <sighs> what to say? It's very risky. It's very risky to take those those wounds on Sevatar when he's only got three wounds. Maybe do it in a clutch situation where you are against that that HQ Praetor so that you can get plus one attack to really, really nail that character and gain the overkill. But other than that, you're potentially just causing extra aggravation and grief for yourself by taking wounds fairly reliably on Leadership 7 leadership checks. But overall, Sevatar is excellent, I would say. Like, weapon skill 8, potentially... Attacks five potentially in those challenges when you've used the power. Four attacks base with or with instant death in the all important prayer to challenge. Going at initiative seven is just really, really good. Fear two as well will stack amazingly, especially if you can get him into combat turn two or three when your terror assault is still making it night fighting. So then there'll be leadership minus three at least. So, yeah, really, really, really good. And finally, on to Conrad Kurz for 450 points, the Night Haunter. And he's leadership eight, weapon skill eight, ballistic skill seven, strength, toughness, wound six, initiative seven, attack seven, leadership ten, save two plus. He's got the Nightmare Mantle, Mercy and Forgiveness, the Widowmakers and Frag Grenades. He has the Psyker and Unique Primarch types, Legion Astartes, Night Lords, Master of the Legion, Hit and Run, which is excellent. Fear 3. Oh my god, that is excellent. The King of Terrors special rule, Bloody Murder special rule for when you put him with Night Raptors and Terror Squads, Night Vision, a Death Long for Seen, and Sire of the Night Lords. So, Sire of the Night Lords, all models with infantry, dreadnought, or cavalry, and the Legion of Starting's Night Lord special rule gain night vision and bloody murder special rules and are immune to the effects of fear. In addition, you gain an additional reaction in the movement phase. Now, for a Primarch who you wouldn't really expect to be a massive buff character to your legions. He is right then and there. Night vision on everyone for free. So that's saving you 15 points a squad. You're not taking the minus leadership penalty on your tactical squads, which I've said skip the night the prey site on them. He saves you points. So he's for every squad that you're going to give prey site to, you can effectively decrease Conrad Kersey's price by 15 points. It's just incredibly good. And adding the Bloody Murder special rule to that is just excellent. Absolutely excellent. That plus one attack on the charge is, oh, is just so, so good when your enemy's pinned. So if you lean heavily into pinning stuff, a lot of, like, sniper squads... Uh, Sniper squads that auto gain night vision because of curse. That means you ignore shrouded because of night vision at all times. So they can't evade. You, you shoot with your sniper squad or support squad with road cannons, though. Why would you? Because you've got terror squads. You do a minus one for the night fighting to their leadership check. And if Kurz is nearby, he minuses three to their leadership. So you can just terror bomb people with curs by just doing that minus three to their leadership from that. So for a total of minus four, including night fighting, he's just so, so good. The Nightmare Mantle provides a two up armor save, four up invun. In addition, ignore all modifiers to movement and automatically passes dangerous terrain. And when choosing to run, adds 12 to his movement characteristic instead of his initiative value. Now this really is where 
he used to have a jump pack. This is where that comes in. He's already movement eight, so that's that's quite a high movement. It's not as good at uh, it's not as good as having a jump pack himself, but adding twelve to movement characteristic instead of initiative is very good when when you do happen to have to run him. So mercy and forgiveness, and he gains these two separate weapons, and weirdly they've listed them with two pro two identical profiles. They could have just said he gains plus one attack. So he gains plus one attack when using them, not including his profile, so he's now up to eight attacks. Mercy and Forgiveness are Strength User, so Strength 6, AP2, Melee, Shred, Murderous Strike 4+. And Murderous Strike 4+, is amazingly good. He, he does miss out on that instant death that some other Primarchs have. He misses out on the Brutal that some other Primarchs have. But he's going to be shredding lessers than himself. He's not going to do amazingly well versus other Primarchs because he's not got that brutal, but he's still going to be wound he's going to be wounding them on fours. He's not going to do excellently. He could maybe with a bit of luck take one out, but he wants to be picking everything else apart in the army. You get the Widowmakers, which is <laughs> throwing blades as he had last time range 12 strength 4 ap5 assault 3 rending 4 plus so he'll potentially kill some use like some people with that he's not the greatest like the greatest weapons ever but i it's not a negative they are the character overall is really good so, a long foreseen death, he gains access to the glint of death psychic power and gains no other disciplines. At the start of any assault phase, a psychic check can be made for Kurs against Leadership 7. If passed, he gains the Feel No Pain 4 plus special rules and plus one attacks for the duration of the assault phase. If failed, suffers perils. Same as Sevatar, although there's going to be less times where you have to use it. <coughs> so, Maybe in that Primark battle, if it happens. Though I'd potentially be saving my advanced reaction to keep Kurz out of that Primark battle. But it gives you those extra things to just go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I'd use it in a very clutch situation, but just I wouldn't rely on it because of that Leadership 7. And the King of Terrors, when Comrade Kurz and any unit he joins ends a combat by removing all models or casualties, Due to a sweeping advance, all enemy no models that can draw a line of sight to Kurs immediately make a pinning check. Oh my god, that is so good. So, he sweeps someone down with his minus three to their leadership because of his fear three. If it's still night fighting, it's another one, so minus four to their leadership. If you then sweep them by d6 plus seven because of his initiative everyone has to take a pinning check again so got leading into someone else's turn if you charged leading into their turn many of their units are not going to be doing anything if it's night fighting if you've got carry if you terror assault if they're nearby your units that's minus one for fear if they're nearby curs that's minus three if it's and it's just compounding how many pinning checks you can stun lock your opponent with across the entire game. And I think he is in an excellent position as a character. Kurz sort of shouldn't have been a buff character, but or in my mind, he's like a bit of a loner. He hates his own legion as murderers and killers. But he is a buff character. And he's a real good one at that, especially if you take Terror Assault. And I've, I've said it multiple times across the video, but I think you should be taking Terror Assault because it just stacks with everything else that you can do in this book. So, yeah, he's, that, that is Kurz. He's excellent. And if I have missed anything across this entire video, please let me know in the comments. Let everyone else know in the comments. If you were 
not going to make a comment, check the comments for things that I've missed because it's all just an ongoing discussion. It's only been, what, three and a half months of new heresy. So there will be things that I have missed that other people pick up. So let me know below. If you liked the video, don't forget to do all the YouTube stuff like like, commenting, as I said before, subscribing. It lets me know that you guys like this sort of content. So I'll produce more of it, I'll put it higher in the priorities to produce more heresy content. And that'll be both games and these rundowns of the legions. Um, if you really, really liked the video and want to help out support the channel, there is a Patreon link below as well as an affiliate link for the War Office. If you subscribe to the Patreon, there is a the bounty trade that you can see on the battle reports, access to the Discord server, as well as for the higher tiers, there is now t-shirts and caps that are going to be sent out. I've actually just sent the prototypes to, or I, in the past, sent the prototypes to the Patreons so you guys can get your hands on one of them and just help support the running cast costs of the channel as we go forward. So thank you for watching and I will catch you guys later.